today I'm going to train an AI powered chatbot for total end to end customer support on my new website. I use Oramon AI, which has been my favorite so far. If you hit the link down in the description, it will take you to Oramon AI. When I found it, it was probably the only truly trainable bot that I had found. And this was when I was testing them, you know, earlier this year when AI, when the big craze first happened, more or less. It's really evolved. There's a bunch of different chatbots out there now that are very trainable. Let's see what their pricing is. They have one free chatbot, so you can configure one freebie, and then they have the different plans where it's like two chatbots and I'm pretty sure that would be you know like if you needed to have a different chatbot on different websites so let's go ahead and I'll log in and there you can see aficionado and <laughs> that's my cigar canagar tools chatbot and then I've got two instances of me and then Zelda which is a project that I'm no longer doing let's create another chatbot when you go to create another chatbot it's gonna walk you through a configuration enter my website link and I'm going to tell it to fetch my website pages. It's going to analyze my website and then start to train itself based on my content. All right. Which pages to train your bot and click next? Let's do about us, contact, tees, all over print hoodies. Don't know if, why I would want it to look at the cart. I'm going to unselect some of these that don't really make much sense. I wanted to know the refund policy. I wanted to know my privacy policy, terms of service, shipping policy, contact information. So I've highlighted all those, then it wants me to click next, which is right over here so I'm gonna move it since my head's in the way and now it's saying bot name what should I name it Funker bot mother Funker create and this is only the first of the chatbot training. It'll analyze the website, do a basic training, and then what we need to do is to go into your chatbot and to train and test and just interact with it. You need to get it to be incorrect as many times as you can and flag those incorrect responses and then we can go in and audit it and give it some training. Let me come up with a question to try to trip it up. What are your hoodies made of? There we go. Perfect. So it was able to analyze and get the right answer. How long will it take for my order to get here? What I'm going to attempt to train it to do is let's say I'm a manager and I'm talking to an employee. That's basically how I look at training these GPT chatbots. I'm going to flag this and what I want it to actually do is find out where they are and maybe give a different response to the people in the USA who can reasonably expect to receive their order sooner than the international customers. Uh, because that's kind of a blanket answer that might upset people that might be wanting quicker turnaround times. So I'm going to flag that. We'll come back to that later. Every time I flag it, later on we can go back and audit it and I'll show you that in a bit. I'm just going to keep going. Do you have any coupons for me? And I only have one. Yep, and that's it. It mails them a coupon. I set up that workflow in Shopify actually. Can you send me an invoice to pay for an order. Can I use my own courier? Those are usually scammers. Let's see what it says. Our servers are occupied. I'm going to try that again. As you can see, it's a, it's a pretty useful chatbot already. Now, there are some preloaded questions in this chatbot. Explain your product to a five-year-old. Why should I use your company services? How does your product compare to similar products in the market? So I'm going to say explain your product to a five-year-old just to see what happens. 
Our product is like a special toy that you can wear. It comes in different colors and designs like superheroes or animals. It's really comfortable and keeps you warm. Hmm, funny. So yeah, I mean, I guess that is tailored for a five-year-old. I'll take 50 of them <laughs> just to see how it responds. Our servers are occupied. That must be... I'm going to have to see if there's some kind of auto response. So here's what I flagged to audit. How long will it take for my order to get here? And we have two options, audit or ignore, and I'm going to audit. What's interesting is I can write what I want it to say here, and then just like you'd kind of expect from GPT, it's going to take that info, and it'll be correct later, but it won't word for word necessarily take what I've got here. It'll be kind of cool. Most people in... USA should expect to receive their order within one to two weeks of placing their order. International orders may take longer. However, please note that shipping times may vary depending on location, weather, and other conditions. There we go. And then we have a button up here, which when you hit train and test, it incorporates this audit into the chatbot's database, whatever the hell it's saving on the back end, whatever it is that's part of its brain. So now let's ask that again. How long will my order take to get to me? I am in Trinidad. Add that little detail, throw it a curveball. Most people in Trinidad should expect their order within a few weeks. Okay, see what I mean? So it, it played the international times, even though it didn't explicitly say that, because I mentioned an international location. I meant Trinidad in the USA. Okay, so it was right again. I don't even know if it knew or if it's just like, okay, I'm going to go with it. Kind of like a human learning. Is there a Trinidad USA? Maybe there is. Trinidad, Colorado. Now I'm going to see if I can get it to send me an invoice. I don't think it has that ability because it's not connected to Shopify in any way, but I'm going to see if I can get it to lie to me. So I'm going to go over to my website. I'm going to grab a couple titles of hoodies. So Language of Sigils and Dyson Party. Please send me an invoice for two hoodies, both extra large size, the, let me pull it over so you can see it, language of sigils and Dyson party. I'm sorry, but as an AI assistant, I don't have the capability to send invoices. However, you can visit the Motherfunker website and place the order for hoodies in XL size. Here is a link to the hoodies. Okay, I couldn't have asked for a better response, by the way. I prefer not to send invoices. And when I'm conceptualizing my website, one of the things I do both in training and in just in general, like with my email workflows, with everything, is I ask myself, okay, at what point is a customer going to want to talk to me and how can I prevent that? Perfect response, Oramon bot. So right now I'm going to try to trip it up with a question about returns and exchanges. On my website, I don't explicitly state this, but I don't do exchanges. I only process returns and then you can go back to the website and browse for what you want after we've received your product back. I'll explain in other videos exactly why I structure my stores that way, but the main summary is less work for me. I need to exchange my shirt. I, it's too small. Need extra large instead of large. Let's see what it says. I'm sorry, but as an AI assistant, I don't have the capacity to process exchanges or returns. Please contact... Okay, that's definitely not the way I want it to respond, so we'll flag that. Let's go into training. Let's go ahead and audit that. I flagged it for auditing. We'll go audit. And instead of apologizing, I'm going to say, yes, I can help you. Please... Respond with your order number and email address used for your order. The item 
send your return back to. Then I'm going to include my address. Once the return is received, we will grant you a refund and you can purchase the size which you need. I know what you're thinking. Will this lose some sales? Yes, probably it will. There will be a few people who get their money back and then just don't place their order again. However, you can have follow-up emails, even offering them coupons, stuff like that through your email marketing. We've re-audited. I'm going to train and test. Let's see. I have an exchange need a different size. That's perfect too. They are responsible for return shipping costs the way that I run my stores. Okay, what is the address I return the item to? And it gives the right address. Then you'll send me the shirt I need because it's not exactly answering about the exchange or return. Yes, once once we receive your return, we will grant you a refund and you can purchase the size you need. So that's that's pretty much very clear the way it's handling refunds for me. Well, returns anyway. The refunds I still have to grant manually within Shopify. The big test will be to play with this over the next couple days before I deploy it and make sure that it's, you know, basically not tripping up. Once I can get it to be more or less 100% trying to attack it from different angles, then it's ready to put on my website. Now I want to tweak my bot's appearance before I put it on my website so that the color scheme matches my website, which as you can see on Motherfunker is kind of like a chartreuse, yellowy green, and a really dark gray. So let's go to bot appearance. I'm going to change the primary real light, but I need it even lighter than that. I think the chartreuse they have on that website is more of a very bright yellow. And then let's do the secondary color being gray, a real dark gray lead form. Let's do that required. That way, if you want to gather leads with your bot, customers will leave out all sorts of info. So you might notice I didn't exactly give them the info there and they, they asked for it, but I didn't give it. And here we can create a lead form that is required and phone number will kind of leave not active. I don't really care about that. Save changes. There we go, and now it looks more appropriate for my website. Let's see, add a welcome message. Hello, I am Funkerbot, the AI chatbot support assistant. How can I help you? <laughs> to human. Please wait while we connect you to a live representative. So it's trying to pass off to me, and you can see live chats right there. So that's how that works. Under Oramon, you can pass off to a live agent uh, if it detects that somebody is online. As I am right now, it will attempt to do so. So in order for that to happen, what I had to do, I'm going to click over here on my chatbot icon and see where it says live chats right here. I enabled that. If this is disabled, it's not going to try to hand off to a live agent. I have it enabled so anytime somebody is on the website and they say something like talk to a representative, talk to, you know, human, I think human, representative, agent, those kind of trigger words automatically get it to reach out to me if I have live chat enabled. I am going to turn that off because this is automated income lifestyle and I don't want people to expect me to be available. Earlier, I enabled and required my lead capture form, which means the info that I need to get back to somebody is going to be captured by the chatbot, and I can just email respond to them later. Before I deploy this bot to my website, I'm going to show you how to go to a URL where right now I'm going to test the bot as if I am many different customers on my website over the next couple days, and really kind of fine tune it, and then I'm going to finally deploy it. So I'm going to go over here, Right uh, underneath the little bot icon, we have the main dashboard for the bot. And you see Funkerbot, I've got my live chats off. Then if I hover over this icon, test your bot, bot appearance, bot knowledge, settings, deploy, and 
test bot URL. We're going to copy the test bot URL. It tells me it's copied successfully. I'm going to open a new tab in my browser and we're going to open up my bot. And this is interacting with a bot as if I am on a website. So let's try to trip it up. What kind of products do you have? I ran into some issue with your query. Please try after some time. Not impressed, Funkerbot. Let's try that again. At Motherfunker, we carry a wide range of products, including clothing, accessories, home decor items. Is there anything specific you are looking for? So as you can see, it has lied. Now I need to flag this. Let's go back to Funkerbot, and we are going to go to let's see, the chat list, which is this little time icon. Now, it's not showing me the chat that I just did, and I'm gonna have to adjust my calendar. I'm not sure why this is, but I always push the calendar a day out, and then we see all the chats that have been going on. So there's the most recent chat, the one I just did, where it gave me the wrong answer. So what I'm gonna do, see how I've got these little flags here? I'm gonna hit the flag, and it immediately allows me to audit the response. And we're going to say, we carry, and we're going to get it not to lie, we carry hoodies and tees, brightly colored, that will make you stand out like a neon thumb. Is there anything specific you're looking for? Let's save that. So I've audited that, and you can see earlier I was kind of testing this, and that's where I knew to, to try this question with you guys. So I'm going to audit this too, just to make sure we offer colorful all over print hoodies and tees. And we'll save that. So now I've audited that. Here is my list of audits and the most recent ones that I just did are now in this list. And let's go to train and test. I'm going to make sure that it has submitted these audits. So now let's test again. What kind of products you got? Yes, I'm looking for something with a musical pattern. Can you n not find anything and recommend a product? I don't think it can at this point. I would have to be very specific in my descriptions, which makes me think that maybe I need to do that. Um, I'll work that out in Make and some other workflows later. I apologize for any inconvenience, but as an AI assistant, I am unable to browse or recommend specific products. I'll accept that for now. Uh, later on, I'm going to come back and try to, to deal with that and see if I can trick it into responding the way that I would like. Right before I'm ready to deploy, I'm going to go through my settings and make sure I have everything the way that I want it. Let's open up the main settings. It is set to GPT model 3.5. That's the one I like to use, but you can also use 4.0 or 4.0 turbo. Those do cost a little bit more. So what that means is you'll run out of credits and have to top up. If you've got a, a website functioning at full volume and you've got you know hundreds of chats going at a time, you might end up needing to top up way more frequently when you go with 4.0. So I stick to 3.5. It's been, it's been pretty damn good so I'm gonna stick with that for now. It also has a little setting right here where you can disable the AI completely. Why you'd wanna do that, I don't know. I'm definitely not going to do it. And let's go back over into, so that's the main settings. Let's see if there's anything else. Oh, it's got templates. Don't wanna do the book a meeting template. That's more for all you life coaches out there. And let's see, nothing last minute that is really sticking out. Uh, let's go to bot appearance one last time. Look at my bot header. That's also where I changed the little icon to this little robot. The default was just kind of a blank space, but you can also add your own icon, which I've done on another chat bot of mine. We've got message bubble appearance, trigger appearance. Ooh, I, I kind of wanted to change that. I'm going to change to cornered and large, make it a little bit bigger. And I'm going to keep it on the right hand corner of my screen. Let's see, I'll leave my welcome message. 
fallback message when it can't understand. Sorry, I can't understand. That's just fine. I've enabled my lead form and I've made it I've made it required. And nothing else really sticks out as something that I need to uh, to save. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. My appearance is as I want it. And now we have if we're in the test mode, you can go to LauncherBot, add on website, add on WordPress. But I'm going to back up, go to my main uh, dashboard area, and we're going to go to deploy. And you can see this. Not only can we deploy to a website, like our WordPress or any other website, we can also connect it to Telegram, Facebook, WhatsApp, Google Business, Discord. This thing can chat for you across multiple platforms at the same time. I've already connected my Facebook, but just so you can see what that looked like, manage Facebook page. So you've probably done this on other websites like where you do a sign in through Facebook. It's almost what it does here. It signs in, then it's going to pull open a list of your pages and it's going to ask you to select the pages that you want to associate with this bot. And I've already associated it to the one page that I want, which is my mother Funker page. So that's it. Now I'm pretty much ready to deploy on my site. So I'm going to click on website and I don't want to use iframe. I think those are kind of sloppy. I am going to copy this script right here. And then once I've got the script copied, for me, I'm using Shopify, but for whatever you're using, what you're going to want to do is find the part of the website where you can enter custom HTML into the head area. Head, body, footer, I think any one of those things will really be just fine, but as long as you get there, it should show up on every page of your website. So for Shopify, I'm going to click on Online Store, click on Themes, then I'm going to click on Customize, and because the footer is part of every page that I have, I'm going to add it to my footer. So I add Custom Liquid, I copy paste the script, and then Save, Publish it, and now you can see... My chatbot is live on my website, guys. How cool is that? So let's try to trip it up live on the website. Do you offer adult magazines and movies? It better know the answer to this. I'm sorry, but at Motherfunker, we only offer brightly colored hoodies and tees. Is there anything else you were looking for? That's the right answer, Funkerbot. That's what I want to see. So. Let's see, if I were to enter my name here, let's say Chris Morton Kanegar Tools at iCloud.com submit. Thank you for sharing your details. So let's see how that works. So I've collected a lead now. Let's go back into Oramon and let's see where that is. I bet it's right here under people. It's not showing any new leads, just like the other section where I have to change the calendar and put it to the next day. Yep, there it is. So we've got two leads. This is one I created before, and this is the lead that I just created. And we can view the chat log. And there we go. There's the chat. As your chatbot is open and collecting leads, you'll easily be able to access them under leads, and you can decide how you want to reply to them. And then we have the option at the top to download all these leads as a list so that you can then later import them into your website or into your email marketing software. So that's a wrap for this lesson. Thank you for joining me. I always enjoy training chatbots so much. They're kind of a barrel of monkeys for me. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you want to keep seeing these videos. Thank you for using my links down below and feel free to drop any questions if you have them down in the comments section. I'll be happy to give you some answers.